the Holy Spirit should be with you. Take what I have endowed you with, being an instrument of God and getting insight concerning the world around you. The God of the Hebrews has sent me to tell you, let my people go. In the night of his Praise the Lord. Peace be unto you. We are continuing our series on the book of Exodus. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic. The topic is intimacy, the benefits of staying close to God. Intimacy, the benefits of staying close to God. Intimacy involves the internal hidden communion between God and individual directly. It is that which should be considered in our activities and actions every day. We have become a people who cherish secondhand things, secondhand clothes, secondhand cars, and especially in Ghana, we even feel that secondhand cars are better than first hand cars. Secondhand ties are better than uh, first hand ties. We prefer to work through middlemen and women, even the development of our, of our spirituality, than working directly with God. Indeed, there are so many spiritual contractors and consultants who are ready to do so for us. For instance, we hire even someone or some people to pray for us monthly for a fee. We contract people when we have a big project coming to say that if I get 10 million, you pray for me and I'm able to get 10 million, I'll give you half of it. Politicians even go in to contract people who will pray for them so that they win political power and they promise them all kinds of things. It is because sometimes we feel that we don't have the spiritual competency or spiritual power or standards to approach God directly. So because of that, we need a spiritually competent high link with the spiritual power and connection to do so on our behalf. Some even behave as if God is afraid of them. So God passed things, passed things concerning them through other prophets, priests, seers, etc. to them. Today we want to focus on Exodus chapter 7 and verses 14 to 25 to talk about intimacy, the benefits in staying close to God. And I read a few verses of it. That is verses 14 to 16 to start with. Exodus chapter 7 verse 14 to 16 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. And he still refuses to let the people go. So go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes down to the river. Stand on the bank of the Nile and meet him there. Be sure to take along the staff that turned into a snake. Then announce to him, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews has sent me to tell you, let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. Until now, you have refused to listen to him. There are three things that I want to talk about. The three benefits of being intimate with God. The three benefits of being intimate with God. The first is clear instructions from God. You get instructions from God directly. Two, you become instruments of God. You become an instrument of God. Being an instrument of God. And thirdly, you gain insight into the world around you. Instructions from God, being an instrument of God and getting insight concerning the world around you. First, let's talk about clear instructions from God. Exodus chapter 7 verse 14 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn and he still refuses to let the people go. So here you hear direct information, direct instruction from God. He says, so go to Pharaoh in the morning as he goes down to the river. Very clear direction, communication by God with Moses. There was no middle man. That is intimacy or closeness. When people are communicating with you directly, telling you exactly what to do. If you are intimate with God, you get direct information. So there is no misinformation or disinformation. God spoke 
to Moses, and Moses heard directly from God. In the Ghanaian context, we talk about a country that is seeking God's direction from prophets. And this is a risky way of living because you can be misinformed or disinformed by the men or women of God. It is true that it sometimes works, but God is not afraid of you. And you should also not be afraid of God to get closer to receive whatever he has for you firsthand and not through a secondhand person. Even if it passes through a second-hand person or a prophet or prophetess, God should confirm it directly to you because God wants to be intimate with you also. Two, you become an effective instrument of God if you are intimate with him and you work very closely with him. You become an effective instrument. Exodus chapter 7 verse 16 says, Then announce to him, that is Pharaoh, the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, let my people go. You need to be clear about your life purpose and your actions and your activities. What has God brought you into this world to do? Moses knew he was to deliver the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan. So that was his life purpose. So that was why he was close to God so that you'll be an effective instrument in carrying out that particular task. What are you proclaiming or announcing in your life? Without a closeness to God, you'll only be reacting to the things around you and not responding. So even though you go through the motions of life, you are not effective in transforming or changing your circumstances. Exodus chapter 7 verse 22 a says, But again the magicians of Egypt used their magic and they too turned water into blood. Why should they do so? I thought they would rather turn the blood that has filled the waters and the people cannot drink and they cannot cook their food to remedy the situation. Because if you are a good instrument and effective, you change a bad situation to a good situation. God has turned the waters into blood and it has a foul smell and people cannot drink. Now, you want to do magic, yes, but the magic you are going to do is to do the same thing, turn the rest of the water that is there into blood. So that is a reaction and it is a bad reaction and it is ineffective because then you have more blood and there's no water. It was just a reaction that the magicians did. And it turned the situation, the, the situation to a worse situation. No wonder Exodus chapter 7 verse 23b says, So Pharaoh's heart remained hard. It remained hard because you, 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 they should rather have, have done something to soften Pharaoh's heart, but they've done something to make Pharaoh's heart even worse. So if your reactions are making things worse, you are not an effective instrument. You are a bad instrument. When you read Exodus chapter 7, verse 20a, 20a says, So Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord has commanded them. Clear, effective instructions from God, and they acted on it. These are good instruments in the hands of God. And God is using it to teach the Egyptians a lesson that will make the Israelites be delivered from slavery into a period of freedom. So intimacy with God makes you God's instrument for effective use to change your circumstances in life. And you change your circumstances not into a bad situation like the magicians did, but into a good situation. You can only get precise ministry done through carrying out precise command, not through secondhand people, but through God directly. Thirdly, intimacy with God, closeness with God, will, it makes you gain insight into the world around you. You gain insight into the world around you if you are intimate or very close with God. Now, Exodus chapter 7, verse 14 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. To gain insight means to have accurate and deep understanding of your context. In these, in these days of word of knowledge, people are not prepared to get closer to God to receive direct guidance and direction from God. Word of knowledge has come from somewhere. 
you are here in Accra. Word of knowledge comes from uh, Kumasi or Kufredra to you, from New York to you in Ghana. And yet, you yourself, you're here and you are not hearing anything. The insight they gained was that they realized that Pharaoh was very cunning and the insight God gave them is that Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. So sometimes you have people who are trying to make you feel that they are the ones who can give you all the direction and all the guidance you need. They make you feel that your direction or guidance in their pockets. So they are the only ones who can give it to you and God cannot give it to you directly. That is false. The Bible says in the New Testament, when the cloth covering the Holy of Holies was torn, when Jesus was crucified, it gave direct access to the throne of grace and took that monopoly of access to God from the hands of the high priest. So all believers have access to the throne of grace. We can talk to God directly, not through the high priest or anybody in our modern context. In conclusion, when we wake up in the morning, what is the first thing you get intimate with? Is it your mobile phone to check your WhatsApp to see the messages you've come or go to your email to check your mailbox? Or is it a prayer to God? A reading of his word so that he speaks to you before you do any other thing. God first. When you are about to sleep, what is the last thing you are intimate with? When you're going to lay down to sleep, what is the last thing you do? Is it going through YouTube, social media, or the things around you? Is it really uh, uh, some things that have nothing to do with God? When you're going to sleep, the last thing you should do is to speak to your God so that he will give you vision and dreams when you sleep so that you have the dreams and the visions of God as to what he wants you to do when you wake up. Exodus chapter 7 verse 15 says, so go to Pharaoh in the morning. Yes, you go to Pharaoh in the morning because God is telling him that in the morning, I want you to do something. As he goes down to the river, he didn't say, when you wake up in the morning, go and see somebody who will give you money. He's sending you to do ministry. Your life is a life of ministry. There's a call of God on you. So when you wake up in the morning, you should wake up with a specific message from God as to what to do. He says, stand at the bank of the Nile and meet him there. God is going to give you directions and real guidance in the morning as to where you should go and what you should do. So you should be ready to hear God speak to you directly. Be intimate with God in, in the morning before you go do anything. Be sure to take along the stuff that turned into a snake. That's what God said. Be sure to take the Holy Spirit should be with you. Take what I have endowed you with. Don't get too secular. Don't get too traditional. Get into the spirit because the only tool you have is the power of the Holy Spirit, the direct power of the resurrection that comes from the Holy Spirit is that which is going to lead you to be successful, to be an achiever for God. If you have a daily intimate reaction with uh, interaction and intimate re relationship with God, be rest assured that God will surely give you clear direct insights and guidance and direction. That will make you effective in delivering the goods, both in your secular and spiritual endeavors. And you will live a purpose-driven life of joy unspeakable. The peace of God shall envelop you from the morning of intimacy, afternoon of intimacy, and also the evening of your life in intimacy. And as you go through the phases of life, may you be like a Moses who fulfills the tasks that God has called him for because he was so close and intimate with God. God bless you. Hope you are blessed with this message. To get in touch with other messages of the servants of God, follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.